Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to Producing with Pro Tools. My name is Gaurav Harish. I'm Artist Relations here at Avid. Uh, we're joined by amazing Avid staff around the world. Um, also monitoring the chat, we have an amazing guest today uh, called Baines. Baines, do you want to quickly come on camera there? Hey, what's up, welcome man? Baines. How's it going, Baines? How you doing? How you doing, man? Thank you for having <laughs> me here, brother. Oh, amazing, yes, man. Yes. Um, so everyone, thank you so much for joining. Um, as you see, we have Baines today and there's an amazing avid staff around the world on our social channels and our Zoom, actually. So if you have any questions, please just pop them in there. We're going to try answering all of them. Um, if not, then we're going to answer them at the end and um, go from there. So Baines, welcome, man. Uh, we've done a few thank of these you, before and uh, we want to crack on and, and um, talk about Baines. So if you don't know, um, we should, but <laughs> uh, if you don't, so Baines is a award-winning mixer um, for Young Thug and YSL Records. Done some amazing stuff um, in the past. And obviously you must have a lot of stuff in the pipeline as well, but um, your records are getting stronger and better and better every single time, man. And, um, you know, I, I can't wait to talk about punk. As you know, I'm a massive fan of that album, just like I am of the other stuff as well. Um, but yeah, it'll be great you to know a little that, intro man. intro about you, Baines, as well, and, and kind of where you began, your first steps into music, and um, just about, about Baines. Yeah, man, thanks, dude. First of all, thank you, everyone, for being here. Thank you for having me. Everyone at Avid, shout out. I've, I've been using Pro Tools since, I want to say, 2004 or 2005, <clears throat> which when it was Pro Tools 5, I think. Mm -hmm. So it's been a while. It's it's been a it's been a it's been a long ride. Uh, it's been cool, man. I went. I started out. Uh, I, I went to SAE in Melbourne for a brief stint. Uh, it was really cool. Just just learned a couple of things. But I kind of wanted to take it further, and that's when I decided to go to full sail. That's when I ended up moving over to the states. I kind of I grew up in India, so I, I mm -hmm. should have led with that. But moved to Australia right after. Then I went to full sail, and um, yeah, I did recording arts and music business at full sail, and then. Um, just moved right to New York City. I started working at a bunch of studios. Uh, and I think within like a year from me having graduated and moving to New York, I'd met a couple of guys who were like, um, just, you know, kind of at the same level as me, um, younger people starting out. And we're like, fuck it, let's just do, let's just do it ourselves. And we set up a little studio in, in, in New York and that eventually grew and expanded. And, you know, that's turned into this facility that we're in now and uh, that we've done all these records and and which is essentially home base for YSL now wow and that's in um well not going to disclose the location but that is in the states it's in, obviously... well we started in new york and now we're in la okay and nice. we're and we're working on a second location in la as well but yeah oh, wow. It's in LA. yeah wow and how many rooms have you got there then now baines so in this current building that we have there's six rooms well wow. uh, five okay. five rooms that we book and then this room that i'm in which is my mix room which is not you know, it's 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 not big enough to do recording sessions or whatever. But there's a lot of you know a lot of cool toys in there for me to mix records. Nice. And when was your first like kind of experience with um kind of getting in with a big artist, or how did it happen that you got introduced to like Marcel <coughs> or Young Thug, uh, Gunna, and all the kind of guys over there? Um, well, I I worked with a lot of artists in the past, and I I think I in 2017, a um, really good friend of mine, Sean. Uh, who'd been working with Thug for a while. He introduced me to Thug and he kind of like, I covered for him. And then I just kept working with Thug and we would go back and forth. And that was like my first introduction to Thug and YSL. And like Thug, you know, is, 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 is obviously the head of YSL, is YSL. So when you work with Thug, you kind of work with everyone under his label. That's how I started working with Gunna, um, Keed and Oong Poong, t and Strict, like pretty much everyone else on the label. Uh, Carly as well. Like I've, I've mixed projects for I think every artist on the label at this point. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. And the facility is amazing, by the way. I remember we saw it like I think it was pre COVID now, of course. But um yeah, it was, it was amazing. Like, it, 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 was, it was like a week before COVID <laughs> happened, right? Nab, exactly. Nab of, uh, yeah, two, Nam. 20, na, yeah, <laughs> Nam of twenty twenty. Yeah. Twenty twenty, yeah, exactly. And then yeah. everything yeah. happened and and now we're here here today. Um amazing. No, that's that sounds uh, amazing, uh Baines. Oh, so I was going to ask you, kind of, I've got a few questions. Um, so I want to know, kind of, how did you get started with Pro Tools? And, you know, what, how did your journey start again with Pro Tools? Obviously, you said you went full sale, but you studied music business as well. Um, yeah, I did. I, I did. I did. Uh, so the way full sale was set up back then was you do the recording arts and you get an associate's degree. And then 
if you do the music business, you get a bachelor's degree. And at the time, my parents were like, "Yo, you you dropping out of business school and doing like you know the, the going through the norm and doing all that, you gotta you gotta do something that uh you know where you you at least get a uh, uh sorry you at least get a uh like a bachelor's degree." So yeah. I was like, "All right, cool. I did it at the time." It was cool because I was in school for another year, <clears throat> but I didn't. Right when I got out, I was like, "Man, it's been one year since I've learned all this technical shit." I did really good. I was valedictorian, graduated with a four point oh GPA. But now I've I've spent a year doing business stuff where I haven't gotten to practice. But um, you know, it's kind of like then you get into the studio and you have to like start like you know dealing with patch base and 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 all this stuff. So it took me a minute to get back into audio mode from music business mode back then and i was just like yo i spent a year i just wasted a year and i forgotten everything i learned mm-hmm. you know i i didn't forget it i just had to like re get acclimatized to it and everything yeah. but it was it was it was cool i in hindsight now i'm glad i did the business course because that really helped me with i don't even know if it actually helped me like i i think it's just um you know unintentionally or whatever just knowing that stuff you just are a little more savvy maybe so that's what I was going to actually ask about, because um, a, a lot of the times, obviously, in an artist relations role, I talk to a lot of engineers. And what I've noticed mm-hmm. is that engineers, are, are, they, they are a brand, essentially, right? You guys are your own business. You're dealing with your own stuff. Um, you're obviously still socially active, more than kind of engineers were back in the day, of course. But more now, you're just becoming like like your own kind of artist or brand or business, right? Um, so you you would say kind of Full Sail definitely did help to <coughs> just getting kind of the basics of of business i guess in the music world um where you could carry that forward now in in that that too but i think i think what full sale really at least for me personally what mm-hmm. full sale did was it, it like really instilled the fundamentals you right. know just yeah. the core principles the fundamentals and also another big thing was you had to do the pro tool certification when you when you did like whatever what the course was that i was it was i think it was, it's called advanced audio workstation or something right. like that but you have to do the pro tool certification and that like i think you would probably know better than me i can't even remember but i think you're allowed to get like one or two questions wrong and they're pretty intense questions they're not like easy like with all those books so i like right. memorized pro tools 101 110 and 201 completely until until i just didn't do the two, 210p i didn't do that one i just right. did the m1 which is p is for post production m for music but just in doing that and memorizing these fucking thick ass manuals i still it, it's benefiting me till today Cause that's the wow. stuff that uninstinctually you like really, really, um, you really get like that, that shit sticks with you. And like, you know, I, I see a bunch of questions about 808s and 808s and 808s. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I guess like, that's, that's a big part of it. That's, that's, that is a big part of it, but you really just have to know the fundamentals in order to, cause like you could do all this dope stuff to an 808 and then it might collapse something else going like yeah. you might've taken up the whole room for that. So now where does everything else get mixed with, uh, fit? And I think that's where it is. It's just about knowing the fundamentals and knowing where you can like, you know, bend the rules a bit to, mm-hmm. to your advantage. It's like a, it's like learning a language, I guess, right? It's like a language. I mean, I've, I've, I've seen you when you're kind of doing your stuff on the keyboard and how quick you are with the shortcuts. And just yeah. uh, when you have an artist, obviously like Doug and, and Dan, <clears throat> some huge artists, obviously they, they'd work in a very efficient and quick way. But then as an engineer, yeah. you've got to adapt to that and obviously be ready and, and make sure. And obviously... Yeah learning the language early allows you to do that right um, yeah i do the, qu- the quickies awesome. the shortcuts and that's what it is that's what the that's what the, the the certification just using pro tools and all that stuff teaches you like you, you have to memorize all this you have to know all of the weird settings in in in, in the preferences so if you go to like if i show up at uh, another machine like another studio or another yeah. system and something doesn't feel right i know exactly like which preference to go to what to check and, and that's just from doing it so much you know what i mean mm-hmm. like, yeah, no, I, like I, just, just just small things like that and I, like that's what i so when i first started when i was in sae i, I remember using cubase and you know fruity loops like early version again this is like over like pre-2005 or whatever so uh, i i was using cubase and then i went to school for audio so i had to stop using all other doors just wow. to learn pro tools <laughs> Just because, you know, you're using, you, you end up using quick keys from one and the other, and it just really confuses you. And like, like you said, it, it is like a language. language. I just really yeah. wanted to give everything to that. And uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of 
what I did and it, it really helped because that's what my thing always was even when I was just starting out like I was I, like I, I was learning but I was fast and that's why people fuck with me and that mm-hmm. kind of just always helped you know and there's a couple of things that I do like that kind of helps me as well like I use I use a one of those like my, my function keys on my keyboard are separated like don't worry about all the, the glowy stuff and all but like oh, yeah. yeah the function the function keys are separated even right. though this is a pro tools keyboard i don't really need the quick keys all i just need are these keys separated so when so when i'm working i like that's how i quick change modes i don't do the option apple one two three four five i, I, I use the quick the, the function keys so right. if they're separated I can like just feel around the keyboard without looking at it. And that's kind of how I move around. And everyone's wow. different. Like I'm really weird on the newer keyboard. Some people that works really well for them. Uh, this is wow. just what I came up on. So that's, that's kind of why I like the old G4 keyboard. Yeah, uh, yeah. But yeah, that's a big part of it. Just just being comfortable. Just, just uh, you know, everything else. You should be comfortable. Everything should be within reach. And then, you know, you, you, you start going. Because like I've, I've used this analogy before. It's like driving a sports car. You want to make sure everything's cool so you can make those fast turns and have everything else, like, you know, stay intact. Yeah, no, of course, man. Um, I, I love the thing you said about the, the hotkeys as well because it's, it's so important. I've seen, obviously, the video that you did with us as well and you was on them hotkeys. Um, yeah, yeah, amazing, I saw that. <laughs> yeah. So I had a question, actually, because I know you, because um, obviously now you're in a, you're in a very strong team. How important is kind of working in the team? And like, you know, do you still feel like you're very attached to it? Are you part of the kind of process all the way through? Um, you know, yeah, as, yeah, yeah. as a team, it's very important for you to kind of obviously <coughs> be a part of the process, let's say, right? Um, yeah, uh, huge. Uh, for sure. There, there, there's, and like, because we're, we're like, you know, the, the, lab, the label, we have a bunch of engineers. We have a team of engineers. There's a team of producers. There's a team of mixers. There's, there's like a bunch of people all working together and obviously the artist is the most important people. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. And like, you know, just, just, just working together is really important. Like for me, it's uh, when it comes to the engineers, there's this flow I work really closely with. He's kind of engineer, Sean as well, AJ in Atlanta and a bunch of guys out here in LA, like there's an AJ over here too, Taylor and everyone. And then in, um, when it comes to me personally, like Arish, you, you met Arish, right? My assistant. Yep. He's really dope. And like, that's the big thing. Like you, you have to have, complete trust like i trust him with files mm-hmm. i trust that if he's going to do stems for me he's going to yeah. double check everything and make sure everything's cool there's like all like the weird like double checking and stuff like that that mm-hmm. i do i know if he does it it's going to be done right one because he's been doing it for so long and then that's mm-hmm. just his personality and nature yep wow <clears throat> and, and on that note kind of as um i think we have loads of students on 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 the call today as well probably around the world yep. as well so before I move on to the next bit about the albums and stuff and, and the juicy stuff with your session, um, yeah. what advice would you give to someone kind of in, in university, you know, they're just studying. Um, obviously, we, we know Pro Tools, obviously learning Pro Tools would be one, learning the language. What else could you tell them maybe about the music business or kind of being a brand or anything that you would, you would kind of encourage a student? I think, yeah, just get, get, get a good grip of Pro Tools. Um, that, that, that is super important understand this music and like i don't know like if music theory is obviously it's super important and shit but i don't know if it says that's the first thing just just have a basic understanding of song structure you know like there's verses choruses bridge that kind of stuff and uh you know just same thing with timing learn how to recognize waveforms uh and like we'll get into that when i jump into the session as well make sure you know all your like you know it's the same thing man you know dot near uh, eyes crossing your t's just making sure like um, everything um, everything is set up good. Sorry, this, this, this chat's like really distracting me. I'm going to move into the side. <laughs> you got a uh, lot of questions at the there. end, then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Uh, uh, sorry, yeah. So, um, yeah, I just, Pro Tools is really important. Pro Tools yeah. and then sig- Signal Flow as well. Oh, of and course. Yeah, no, 100%. Song structure. Uh, yeah. Sig- yeah. Signal Flow is a, a big one, I think. Yeah, that really right. helped me as well. Yeah, definitely, man. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna move on a little bit now, Baines. Um, I see yep. the questions coming in as well now. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so obviously let's talk about Go Crazy for a second. Um, absolute phenomenal song, and even in my notes I wrote it was one of the, the most influential songs of my um, going out with the boys kind of days. <laughs> you know, uh, as yep. it is, man. So massive. Still plays in UK. You know, I went out a couple of weeks ago. Still playing. Everyone goes crazy. Yep. Literally. Yeah, yeah. Shout, out, <laughs> um, shout out to my, my brother Tizio. 
Exactly. I was just going to mention. So Tizio, you've connected me up with Tizio. Amazing guy. You guys, have, you could tell you guys have a like a bond and a relationship. <clears throat> First of yeah. all, I want to start with how do kind of engineers in LA, like how do you guys co- like have this bond? Because before, obviously, I can't say anything because um, I, don't, I don't live in LA, but obviously it would be kind of like a you're on your own kind of thing, right? Now I see it more and everyone is so well connected. And if two artists are collabing, yeah. they've got their engineer, their engineers are collabing. And it's such a beautiful thing to see. Um, it it is. For me personally, I'm noticing that it's very recent. So I've always run studios and always been in studios. So I've always been close to engineers, like a lot of engineers. I've always had a lot of engineer friends. Uh, whenever I have a problem, I know I can call someone or, or troubleshoot or walk through. And it's usually people calling me for a bunch of things too. I've got a pretty good circle of that. But I've noticed recently, I, I think because social media is, is a lot more accessible. Like there's yeah. people who I've just heard their work and I just know of them. But we can jump on a call and it'll be super cool. Like MSM from London. Of course, yeah, Michael. Really nice yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah Mike. Yeah. I just, I, I literally just know him from social media. Like we've, <laughs> we've, uh, we, we've text, DM'd a few times. But when I, yep. I, I had, I, I had to go to London for a day, and he hooked me up with everything. He hooked me up with the gear wow. rental company. Hooked me up with a bunch of things, and just, and it said, and it, like that, that was a great example of how we don't know each other. We've spoken a few times and had great conversations. Same thing, Stuart White. I don't really know him. I mean, I've never really met him, but yep. we've just we were introduced to another friend and we've spoken and you know a bunch yeah. of times. And it's it's super cool. I, I I like that doing like pod doing like podcasts and like little talks like like, like this. Like yeah, my, my buddy um, Matt Rad does a weekly thing with with John Costelli, and he has people like me and Tizio on. So it's like building a community. Can't producers do it because producers meet up meet up with each other and work on beats together. And I think now. Um, engineers having to do records together or just being in the in the room or just you know having someone yeah. to shoot the shit with and that's what's amazing because obviously go crazy you've got chris brown and obviously then tizia would be chris brown's engineer right um, yep. and, and then then you had yourself with, with thug and stuff so it's for me obviously outside it looks so amazing because it's like it's good to see two engineers as you said the producers thing here yep. i always hear about like producer link ups and stuff it's always happening but an engineer link up's never really <clears throat> kind of a common thing but now it's getting common and it's like cool to see because it's like you're clapping your ears are clapping with other ears man. Um, it's, it's, and, it's amazing and, and you sharpen each other that's no, exactly like a big right thing because like there you're, you're he might learn something one day i might learn something i might find a new cool plugin or a new cool technique and method so i think that that's a big part of it just being being communicative and uh being open that's what, like people aren't as secretive as they used to be i think that's yep. a big thing now because everyone's going to figure it out anyway you're better off like just you know I don't, I don't want to say sharing, but just like, um, you know, just, just, just helping other people out, I think. Yep. No, I agree. Um, I have a question actually, Baines, um, yeah. random one. Do you prefer kind of mixing when someone sends you stems or would you be, would you, um, rather when you're in the kind of session <clears throat> and you're mixing as you're going along, you're mixing, yeah, literally as mixing going along or stems are sent over via email or Dropbox or whatever it may be. And then you kind of sit down on your own and then start mixing. What do you prefer as an engineer? Do you mean as like just working with as, as as opposed to working with the client or as opposed to them committing everything and sending it or being yeah. a, like a, a session? Yeah. There's so I, like I've been I've been I've been battling back and forth with this for a while. Um, I I think I personally get a better quality product and result when I get the actual session and I mm-hmm. get rid of everything that's on there start from scratch i might keep a few things keep the essential vibe but start mm-hmm. from scratch and then just you know get rid of any crazy 30 40 db of compression that people might have yeah. on or these crazy high frequency boosts and stuff that being said the chance the notes or the the, the the notes when i do something like that or the chances of it getting approved are a little less than when someone sends me stems and i just work out their stems right. so i think when you get the stems like that it handicaps you, but in a positive way sometimes. Maybe it might make the process much faster. Because if I was mixing for me, for my personal pleasure, I would do it the first way. But when yep. you are dealing with other people and other artists, I'm I'm beginning to learn that it's probably easier, or it's just better to like take what they have, and like like so. Recently, I did a record. It's two examples. I did one record where I completely scrapped everything. This is in the past month past two weeks uh completely scrapped everything because the vocals were just way too thin just super thin and super high up there and i just didn't like them so i was like yo let me just 
start over. So I got rid of that, started over. And he loved the record. And then the album came out and it was, it, was, it wasn't my mix. And he was like, yo, it was a timing oh, wow. thing. Then I heard the mix that came out and it was, a, it was a dope, it was a dope mixer that did it. It was Manny. And I was like, oh, he kept all of that, but he made it better and fine tuned it. And then there's another oh, record wow. I did uh, a couple of days ago, actually over the weekend, where I, so it was like, he had the C4 on the pop vocal preset, which is yep. like seven DVs on top. 5D, which I really hate all that stuff. So what I did was I would bring each one down by like 4 dB or 3 dB, but right. in in um, kind of like, so if I'm bringing the high down three, I'll bring the mid down three, bring everything down equally. So it kind of is, it, it still has that sound, but it's not as crazy. And then I can go and like, you know, use oh, like wow. kind of better stuff or like use the, the plugins I like or the hardware I like personally so again it's it's different man some it, it just depends on what it is and like i i, I oh yeah and then those records that i did that on they they love them they got approved right away and he was like oh wow uh, you know, i want you to mix and it was a new client too it was someone i know but a really big artist but he i just know him from working with thug he just asked me to make some records he was like oh you're doing all my hip-hop shit now going forward <laughs> <laughs> love that so, um and again that's something that i've 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 gotten better with it talking to other people because that's I I I didn't know that that's how it is, that that that's how to do it because like I thought if you get a session and someone's doing something crazy you take that shit off and yeah. then you know redo it but um just talking to other people and like people like you know John Costelli who I look up to a lot too he said one of his podcasts that like he said the same thing that, that there are a lot less revisions when you do something like that when you when you work off their stuff and so I've I've been doing that off late and it's it's been a lot. You know, I can mix it off faster. I'm spending a lot of time dealing with issues that don't need to be issues. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Like, like I, I bring so much surgery where all, you know, we don't need to do that much surgery. You can just yeah. lift off. You can back off here and back off here. Uh-huh. But again, that's the sound that they're used to. That's the sound they like. So, you know. You would do that. Yeah. It's wrong. No, 100%. Um, it's true. Like, it's crazy. As you were saying that as well, it's like, there's no actual manual that tells you how to mix or how to right right i wish there was that would be easy man (laughs) yeah right but there isn't um but yeah no so that so the next one before we go on to um kind of showing your template because i know people are looking looking at that as well so um punk man that was amazing um it was one of my favorite albums in a very long time especially the song with j cole as well um and obviously recorded with carbon but yeah that album was just so good i think it was mainly because it was very different as well it wasn't uh-huh. your typical. It was very different. It was um, it was a different. And obviously, I didn't, yeah, didn't it was, expect it, right? Um, I think it was like it was a passion project that he just always wanted to do. Yeah, you know, for for for, for like a, you know, one of the biggest trap artists to come out with an album that's basically guitars, <laughs> and you know, some records, a lot of records had no drums. Uh, you know, there was no big single going to it, no no big music video or anything. Still yeah. went number one. Still did well. People still talk about it. So yeah, it's just a testament to him and and his vision. Yeah, no, and and was it? Uh, so this is what I was going to ask actually. So was it different for you? Obviously, tracking obviously with Carbon, but was it also different mixing that album? Uh, that, considering it was like a passion project, or again, did he do that? Yeah, as you were going it along? was. Be- it was because he was so tied to that project. A lot of the the mixes that I mixed where he he thought they sounded too far away from the demo. So a lot uh, of them we right. ended up going, he wanted to go back with to the demo. Uh, so that's why they kind of, some of them don't sound as polished as because it's the, the tracking mix. But that's just the vibe he wanted to go for that. But yeah. there are other songs that I did spend time on. Like, so the one you were talking about, Stressed with with, with Cole and T-Shine. Mm-hmm. They actually did that. Like Thug and T-Shine and Cole actually did that record when he was on tour. Um, wow. With J. Cole. <laughs> wow. I think that's, 2019 or 2018 maybe 2019 okay yeah um and it was we just had the record and we were trying to use it but there was a like the the there was a keyboard in there and the sample there was some issue with the production mm-hmm. so that record like we were trying to put it together and then finally T, we had a few people working on it t minus was working on it until nice on i think i got final approval from j cole that we could use that record at about seven or eight in the morning and the album comes out at 9 p.m. that night. On oh, Thursday. man. <laughs> and, you know, like, like th- there was so many records like that. that we're, we're like, we're doing it right at the end. Like, Travis had cut his verse the night before. Oh, wow. Uh, bubbly. 
and try to mix that, do that, yeah. and then this, and then like you know how it is when it's like going into yep. uh, release <laughs> it, everything goes crazy. But yeah, so with that one, because I got everything at seven or eight in the morning, and I had a very little time, and it was C minor, so he had a lot of stuff. He went, it, it, you know, it was it was drums, but there was keyboards, pianos, guitars, it's a lot of stuff. It was mainly keeping his balance and just making sure there's no resonance, like yep. that nothing bothered. So like there's like. And also, I've learned this because I've been in this position so many times where, like, yo, you have to prioritize. You know, mm-hmm. if you have one hour to mix the record or two hours to mix the record, you can't do what you all, what you want to do, you know, or, or, or everything you have to oh, do. Man. You got to prioritize. And that's that's where, like, you know, I've gotten pretty good at, like, say, okay, we'll do this. Get the vocals. Make sure the vocals sound good. There's no clicks and pops. You know, make sure, like, you might have to... Uh, hit the limiter a bit hard, like the or, or limiter or compress on the vocal a bit harder because you didn't have as much yeah. time to clip gain or, or you know that kind of stuff mm-hmm. but again it's just it there's no i don't want to say it's right or wrong it's just that's what it was we had that much time and we had to make it work yeah and and actually as a so i was going to mention actually so as obviously an artist you do like vocal warm-ups or you might have certain warm-ups as an engineer do you have a certain kind of warm-up or anything you do as well like obviously you'd have assistant create your session um, but if you're tracking, would you have several mics laid out or certain thing that you do to kind of be yeah, ready? Because yeah. there's a lot, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think with, with, with mixing, like I try to, again, it doesn't always happen, but I try to keep the prep part separate from the mixing part, like all the technical stuff, like getting it routed right in my template, making sure everything's slipped in right, making sure, you know, everything, like just, 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 when I sit down, I want to start mixing and not not think about technical shit. Yeah. Uh, and yep. if I have to do that, I would do that and then take a bit of a pause so you can like mm-hmm. switch, between, you know, just the different side, like left brain, right brain kind of thing. Yeah. No, 100%. Um, okay, cool. Should we dive into the demo for 15 minutes and then we'll answer all these amazing questions? Yeah, like, let's do it. <laughs> so we're going to, yeah. we're going to, I'm going to first do uh, my tracking uh, situation. Okay. Yep, perfect. So, guys, this is the tracking template from uh, Baines that we're going to go through. All right, cool. So, do you see that? Yep, all good on my side. All good. All right, cool. So, I'm just going to run through. I'm just going to work as if I was working and and um, talk you through it as I'm going along, okay? First yep. thing I'm going to do here, I'm going to add a beat over here. Let's pick any one of these. Uh, well, this is this one, 140. This is just a pack I have from my buddy uh, Blanco, dope producer. Nice. Don't worry about the sample rate thing. If I, if I like, I would, I would have made the session in 48 if I knew the beats were like, you know, I, I kind of try to keep the session the same as that. So anyway, yep. the first thing I do, I, it comes over here. I just drag it up to that track, mm-hmm. and then get rid of this. And I'll always duplicate this, just so I have the original placement. Okay. Now, I, I did already pop this in mix and key, so I know the key is D minor, and it's 140, which nice. is 70, so I work in 70, and oh yeah, so that, this is the important thing. You see that little gap over there? I'll yep. always get rid of that. So nice. you go there. There's a few different ways to do it quicker, whatever, you know, tap to transient, whatever works for you. And, and that's then the beauty about big... shuffle mode, right? <laughs> that's the beauty yeah, of shuffle exactly. mode there. <laughs> exactly, Quick and easy. Yeah uh so then about eight db down there and then you know i know this is good and then you see all these markers that just show up in this that's just for me to know that that's usually you know the markers were already there i don't know if you noticed yep. or not so a lot of times he would want to come in right there you know what i mean he'd be like right, dropping it right okay. there. that's yep. why i have that marker there so i can you know hit period eight period and wherever i am in the session I could just oh, jump nice. right there real quick. You know what I mean? Oh, wow. okay, yeah. uh, and those are already there. Then as the session goes along, I'll go in and tweak it and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, I used to just use mix and key. I've been using auto key a lot more now. I'll tell you why. I, uh, because because I've been using the, the carbon and I've had to use auto-tune hybrid as well as auto-tune mm-hmm. pro, um, this saves me a step. And instead of setting two keys, I just set it one time. But right. that being said, I've I've been through this before. There's a group I have over here that says AT voc, Vocal One. Yeah. If we go to, do you see that? Do you see the screen I just opened up? Uh, yep. I can see it. Yep. Modify group. Modify group. Okay, perfect. So if you go to attributes over here, you'll see the first two bags of inserts are 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 linked. So that means is if I go here, and I make that zero over there, I go to any other auto tune, and it'll follow along. 
Right. Okay. Wow. Uh, so you can send you can send it to uh, AutoTune directly then, right? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And then um, key as well, which is D minor. Okay. Yeah. So we got the key, and we've got the tempo. I usually would maybe probably start over there. This is a good starting place, at least for for me. My back off, my comfort. Uh, and then yeah, let's go through this. So another thing is, let me swap. What I'm sharing real quick. So, so Baines, actually, can I ask you a quick question just on that? Um, yeah. Someone just popped in a question called Dennis, and it's uh, actually a really good question. So when you're tracking yeah. and you kind of put in a beat, let's say, or an instrumental, um, yeah. do you do anything specific to that? Obviously, it would be dependent on the beat and kind of where it's come from. Yeah, so, um, so I've got this over here that, mm -hmm. that's there. That's just a roll-off. Sometimes it's a little, there's a little too much low end. But right. what I like to do is I, I usually, I don't know, I don't know it's not on this template, but I usually have something like this. Oh, uh, right. Okay. Um, and and that, that would just be like any kind of, like where, wherever it is, the top end. And it, it, I would usually do it, make it dynamic. Just so that the hi-hats and the snares and that kind of stuff doesn't um, uh, clash with the beat. And then All I right. could take it off later if wow. I want to and stuff like that. That's uh, smart. <laughs> and yeah, so then we're, we're so we're, say we recorded this section over here, okay? I, I've been over this before. But like I do a lot of like again, this is like more of a mixed thing. But like I use clip effects a lot. So you see these windows up top. These are my presets. I'm and I'm now I'm just running through them really quick. Uh, one I'm hitting one on the keyboard, two on the keyboard, three, four, five. So if it's if it's something that's se, I would just hit this and go on. That's usually a, a, a good little thing. If it's something that's harsh in the middle, this one usually helps. Uh, a three or five K, you know, just something around there. And then those are starting points. I can just rush through real quick. Um, I, I use that clip effect section a lot, but yeah, I record on one track up here. We, we got done recording and then we drag it down. Uh, and that's just so you can like move quicker. You know what I mean? Yep. Uh, okay. Now then everything from that track goes to this, the vocal track, which again, basic EQ stuff, basic DSing over here too. What you want is kind of, I keep I keep playing around with the plugins that are, that live here as long as they're all low latency it doesn't really matter. Yep. Uh, because again this is gonna get changed when you're mixing it. I have an SSL over there that I don't really use, but most studios have it. So in case they don't have what I'm using, uh, I put the Neutron on there. This Exciter is amazing, but I keep it off until I'm done recording because it adds some latency. But this Exciter is really cool. That's how I usually keep it, like breaking up on that and. Um, yeah, so that's that. And then I have a Phoenix on here. Not doing anything right now, but it's usually like somewhere around there. Uh, mag, another EQ, little compressor, and then an Rvox right at the end. And yeah, but the, the main thing here is low latency, man. I, I've like said this so many times. Keep it low latency, keep it, keep it working smooth and make sure it works everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why I've got different versions. Like I might not have the neutron, neutron in the Phoenix, but like most places have waves. Most places have fab filter. Plugin mm -hmm. Alliance is getting pretty common now too, so you should be good. Uh, and yeah, that's that one. Let me open the other session. Do you have any questions well, on amazing. this? Um, I mean, I love the template. <laughs> yeah. It's, um, again, like there's a lot of hidden stuff over here. If 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 I need more tracks, I just do that. You know, I get a whole new bank over there. The idea is you 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 want to have everything that you would need without having to like duplicate and make some new stuff, but also you want to be able to navigate it really quick and easy. Okay. So I, that's why I keep them inactive, hidden. I don't want to tax the system if I don't need to. If I'm just recording one artist, I don't need like four different vocal tracks and all that. Uh, yeah. Perfect. And obviously, I love the way that you've done kind of your record track, and then you just drop it down and drop it down and drop it down. Um, oh yeah that just helps you I work have... efficiently right and and quicker exactly yeah. exactly and then suppose there's this that i want to keep and i want to like if he's like if we've done this okay and he's like let's say there's like audio here obviously you can't really see anything here um but anyway uh and he's like uh mute that let's do it again so what i would do is it's it, got all these weird things because I don't record in here. But anyway, 
I would I would just hit record real quick and then grab this and like hit this up there instead of clicking it and muting it. That way I have uh, I right. have a, a track open up top on mute on playlist mode. And the reason I have that is like suppose I have another thing here. Now that I've done that, if he's like one more time, I just record real quick and then I can store this up there. You know right. what I mean? Yep. So it's, oh, wow. it's just a workflow thing. It works for me. It might not work for other people. You might have to turn off uh, one of these. Uh, either edit, I oh, can't remember. I think it's that one. Uh, yeah. In order that when you when you when you drag up, it doesn't deselect from where you are. Yeah, that's it. Um, in 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 actual application and practice, this works out a lot better. It's just so it's there for me to like you know jump around quick mm -hmm. and, and to see everything visually. Right, and and then beans. Just on that bit there, I've got uh, someone's question in. Um, so how much do you actually produce, let's say, finishing product, but um, how much of the vocal do you actually produce as you're going along? Because I know you have your chain set up. Do you kind of just leave it here? Then obviously when the artist is done, then you mix it. Yeah, is that kind of the yeah, yeah. I'll leave it here. I, I like while he's recording, I might make minor tweaks, most of them on playback. But like I've noticed that like I used to do that a lot more than I do it now. Mm -hmm. And um, it's because like, if I'm going and turning knobs and stuff while he's recording and he's looking at the screen because he's looking at the waveform, he's looking at the drops and everything or, or where the beat drops. If I have a plug-in window, it's, it's distracting, you know, right. for the artist. Yeah. And you're, this is what I've, I, uh, uh, something that I, it took me a while to get this right, but I can't reiterate enough. When they're working, it's their time to be creative when they're recording. Mm -hmm. You just have to record everything they're doing, capture what they're doing and make sure that if, if they need something or if they have an idea, you can like, you know, throw a quick effect there, or do something there. And also it shouldn't be like the vocals are 10 times louder than these are the, with re, within reason. You know what I mean? You want to make sure that there's basic leveling. Um, it's not over compressing or whatever, but still you're not like making like minute EQ changes while he's recording. You know what I mean? That there's, right. I could do that later. Um, and then that's why I like do the other stuff. You know, I, I'll, I'll do all this right while we're recording. And then, uh when it's cleanup time and all that's when all that happens um uh, yeah, yeah. i'm still fading i'm still making sure things are organized and everything i'm just not i might not be like you know doing like half db eq moves while we're recording okay cool uh, um let's jump to the other session yeah yeah definitely man um how's the tesla doing <laughs> nice how is yours it's good to have it back. Uh, oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, you were saying. Um, yeah. Now, it now I want ready? the... I, yeah, it's good. I want, uh, now, now I want the plaid. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. There's like a... There's a one-year wait over here. Oh, wow. Yeah, there's a... On the wait actually, a, yeah. a lot of things have chips in, I'm guessing, right? <laughs> um, yep. Similar over there. Exactly. <laughs> um, yep. There's um, All right, here's... tons of right. questions, Zorbanes. Should I? Okay, we'll go to the next session, then we'll do the questions after. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to breeze through yeah. this. Stop me if you have anything. Pretty, cool. pretty straightforward. Uh, this isn't a crazy session. It was a quick little uh, mix I did. So everything from here goes to the all drums. I just have a navy on there and a black box, parallel drum. Sometimes I'll separate the, the high stuff and all uh, and send it to this bus. Um, um, sorry, Baines, actually, we can't see your uh, screen. Sorry. <laughs> oh, shit. Sorry. Yeah. There you go. Yep. Yeah, all good. All good. So this all is right. your mixing template now, right? This is like a mixing this, template. Yeah, yeah, this is, yeah. And and this, because of the song I've already done, you can see the cleans already in the same session. Yeah. But yeah, so pretty straightforward. Drums up top. Uh, then 808. Let's see what we have with the 808. Nothing crazy. Got a surfer EQ here. Uh, parallel voice of God. Parallel, uh, but it's not being used, actually this um ts overdrive that is being used on the 808 and then all the 808s come to this bus over here got a ruby on there boosting it a bit specter doing some stuff um i've got blue cat running oh wow good old ozone five uh jason joshua right there uh <laughs> there's a little bit of a c2 in there and a dynamic eq and yep and because this is like a lot of tracks these days, the melody is just other. Music is just one 
track uh, and it looks like I've committed things. So I probably, let's see what I committed. Um, oh yeah, I committed some outboard. So yeah, um, you know, it's just anything that's, that's there, like it's, I probably ran it through some outboard EQ or compressor or something. I can't remember what it was. Um, and then, yeah, vocals again. Uh, this is the hook. Pretty, there's some, some weird EQ stuff going on over there. Uh, Suze. Love this guy, Spectral Shaper. This guy is really cool too, leveling things out. And yeah, you see there's some, there's a Ruby on there, Dopamine from Gem, really cool for top end. Nice. Um, uh, yep. Uh, anything different between the two vocals? Yeah, there's a, this one has a Gulf Force on it that the other one doesn't have, I think. But anyway, they all, they all, this is where everything ends up in the session. This section yep. down here, where it says routing uh, uh, VCAs, and then the VCAs for it. Uh, drums, bass come there, instruments, vocals come there. I have some, uh, I love this guy. He usually lives on this bus. Um, this is from a DSP. You have to use their, their hardware for it. Uh, and yeah, that then all of this goes out, these individual channels. Uh, in this case, I only needed four. Sometimes I'll have more, you know, it just depends. Mm -hmm. um, coming out, hitting uh, the, the Neve summing mixer, it's going through one fusion and uh, the master bus processor. And then this is what, this is my in the box um, mix bus, Moex, SSLG. I, I, I swapped out this G, this is an older one, but now instead of this guy, I, I've been using, I got an NG bus comp. Okay, this is disconnected. Um, but, uh, this is actually a hardware compressor that's controlled with the plugin. So I right, keep okay. this on there and it's just all the settings as you turn this, it, it, it switch, it moves on the hardware unit in real time, which is dope. Then you just leave this and every session you open up, you don't have to do any recalls. Mm -hmm. Uh, I had a couple of one shot effects over here, vocal effects, nothing crazy. Uh, or like on this word over here, there's a. And it says what it is because this is from my template. It says wet, wide, single verb, repeat. So it's basically like you know, and then just just individual words that get like a throw on them and stuff like that. And here, okay. everything goes down to the I mean the stanza here mm -hmm. that I can and all these things get collapsed. I know the session looks a little like chaotic, but like you see this, all all of these things could collapse, so it like kind of looks a little more organized. But yeah, let's see. Um, um, yeah, do you have any questions on this? Yeah, so there's a cool question that came in um, from Demetra. So thank you for the question. So do you drag the tracks to the mix template or is there a certain way you route from the recording template to the mix template? Yeah, so basically what I would do is I would, um, there's a couple of different options. Um, the first one is I can literally just hit shift Apple N over here. When I say this is the recording template, mm -hmm. okay? And then if you go here and you go to track presets, and if you go to mix by Bane, and then ah. you click there, I think that's where it is. And then, oh yeah, mix by mix bus. Do you see all these options? Yep. So this is my whole mix template in, in here. So I could just hit shift Apple N and it'll wow. import the whole template in. That's one way of doing it. The other way is, you know, the straight old, uh, import session data. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, that's yeah. And, and then I have a bunch of them that keep getting updated. Um, uh, you know, over the time, over time, and um, it it just depends on how how it is. But yeah, it's usually I usually keep the session in whatever it is, and then import my template and then make sure the routing is cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. um that's yeah, great, you want to go through some more questions? Yeah, yeah. So um, there's loads of questions that come in. Should we start answering them? Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Are you good that means? Okay, cool. Yeah. So we'll go for the first one. Um, so going back to a little bit about university and kind of everything. So what was the most helpful course or degree that you've ever done in music business, or, um, such as music business, which gave you the biggest push in the industry, or maybe one of the biggest influential degrees or courses you've done, actually? Full sale recording art. Yep. Okay. Yeah, it has to be. Yeah, full circle recording yeah. arts for sure. I mean, amazing. Um, so, 
So what differences do you find on the end result of mixing in the box versus sending stems to analog out and back into Pro Tools uh, by Alexander? Um, I think when you're, um, um, so I think me personally, when you're mixing in the box, it's, it's, it's just a headroom thing. That's, that's, that's what, uh, I've been doing hybrid for a decent amount of time and every now and then I have to do something in the box and I'm just like, the way it reacts with the mix bus that's a little different like i'm i'm always like going back and like dialing things back and making sure they're all like um you know just the game staging is right that's what it is the game staging is just different and uh hardware is a little more and it's i'm not just saying all hardware but in my particular situation having this hardware the summing mixer and then a limiter and the burl a bomber that that handles clipping a little different from from other converters um all of those things kind of like I'm always reducing in gain stage, watch, watching, lowering things so that they don't choke the mix bus on in, a, in the box mix. But when I'm using hardware, you could do the same thing. It's just quicker to get there with hardware. Right, right. Okay. Um, awesome. And then got a question from someone called Greg. Um, <laughs> what do you think of carbon? Oh, I love the carbon. I, it's, been, it's been dope. It was great on the album. Um, I, I just moved it to my to my home studio and I've been using it there a lot. The quality wow. converters are great. We we recorded a lot of the vocals just um, going straight through the carbon preamp and we really liked it. Yep. And also, you were saying on Gunner's album as well, you guys recorded some stuff, right? Oh, yeah. Um, Flo actually told me that. Um, the, the day Gunner recorded um, Love You More, which is the record that we did on mm -hmm. SNL or more than anything, uh, which the one with Nate and Gunner and all, the day he did that, I think right after that, Flo was telling me he recorded Empire, which is the outro to Gunner's album, which right. is also it's a similar vibe. Oh um, wow! <laughs> so he did he did that over there. Uh, I, I, I like I just found out recently. Was, uh, cool that oh was, nice! Was, uh, doing the same, uh, we were calling them the White Sessions. But yeah, um, that's that. I, I see uh, this other question that popped up over here, which is pretty cool. It says, "Do you mix into your mix bus?" So what I'll do is I'll start the mix off. Mm -hmm. uh, and I guess the first half hour maybe I'll, I'll, the mix bus will be off while I'm doing stuff uh, like making small tweaks leveling and then once I'm happy with the way it sounds then I'll gradually start adding things Right. and there's, there's two different approaches there's a bottom up approach and a top down approach a bottom up is how most mixes go but then if there's a top down approach where you're mixing something where you have all the steps and everyone's done like there's a lot of work already gone into it and you're just finessing it, then you do a top-down approach. You know what I mean? Right. Okay. That does make sense. Yeah, no, for where sure. You work from, where you work from the bottom up or you work from the mix bus back. Um, right. Once the mix bus is on, I'm constantly going and making changes and making sure it's cool. Maybe one of the things don't work. But my mix bus is pretty pretty consistent. I might have like three or four things that I put every now and then, not always. But mm -hmm. for the most part, it's pretty consistent. It's just some plugins come on and off depending on the song. So actually, Baines, on that note, um, I kind of have a question there as well. Um, how do you know when a mix is done? <laughs> it's a very hard question, uh, but I know I've been in sessions depends. when it never finishes. <laughs> it just depends on what, what the deadline is. Oh, oh see, that's if, smart. If, 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 if there's no deadline, that shit's going to carry on forever. Like, there's, big, <laughs> there's no priorities I, then, right? <laughs> yeah, like, I had to do a mix this last weekend where I needed, they need, they, it had to go to, for vinyl cutting, so they needed two records done in about three hours. Wow. Three or four, not even. So I was like, I wish, like, even now I'm like, man, I wish I could do that. I wish I could do that. I'm like, yo, just, just make sure the mastering engineer <laughs> like, <laughs> has got your ass uh, in that situation. But yeah, it just, it just depends, man. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> um, all right, cool. Let's move on to Tom's question. So do you still use your vocal chain with the 1073 um, and the C800G or has anything changed since? Ski... Um, uh, and you recommended to use the 1073 with a U87. Um, no. Because this is the only no. available mic for me. Oh, on ski. And you can that... recommend, I think. Yeah. Can you recommend? Oh, oh okay, cool. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't personally use the 87 unless it's a vintage 87. Mm -hmm. uh, again, with the vintage 87s, the problems are there's not as much. So they, they sound good, but they're not as... Um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um damn i'm blanking over here they're, they're just not as consistent you know what i mean like 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 every mike a will defer from mike b and mike c and that's why i like 
using the ten the, the C eight hundred and the ten seventy three um, with either a CL one B or TLA uh, one hundred or something like that for recording because I know they're always going to sound the same or at least they're going to be they're still going to sound closer to there's not going to be as big of differences you know what I mean Yep Yep Okay um, Cool I'll move on to the next one um, So what is uh, your opinion on Oh Should we move on or Yeah yeah go ahead go ahead, go ahead. Yeah cool so, so what is your opinion on internal HCX card versus carbon Because obviously you've had both before and obviously use them in different kind of environments and So in my and I'll correct me if I'm wrong um, I haven't figured out a way to offload the mixer engine onto the carbon DSP chip that's just for HDX for hybrid engine stuff, right? Right. Um, I think I may need one of our specialists to kind of chime in okay. here. Okay. Yeah. That, so that's that, that's my understanding. So I personally, I think they're different. If you're if you're in a recording environment and you want to use low latency stuff, the carbon is great for that. Mm-hmm. Um, when you're mixing and you want to offload resources onto onto the cards, that's when I would prefer the chip. Yep. Um, uh, so they're, they're, they're both great in their own respective ways and I would use them for different things yeah like I, I, I love carbon because um, I could just take it into any studio as you said as well you moved it from obviously one place you're recording back to home back to the studio easy exactly. everything's in, inside and it does the job and that's amazing yeah um, so another question is as a producer I've always had preference in the en- in engineering especially in the free bands uh, YSL sound my favorite has been Seth Ferkins, absolute legend. Um, RIP, Fred, Seth. Man. RIP, exactly. Um, Glenn S for mastering and currently Colin is killing it. I feel the balance of music has changed a bit from the platforms accepting 48K to and 24-bit for HD music playback. Is there any adjustments you had to do um, and any favorite mixer or mastering I, engineer that you have taken tips from? Laporta, Joe Laporta. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Joe Laporta at Sterling Sound. He's 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 had a a, a big influence in, in in like how I deliver things, what I do, and he's just always had my back. And like he's he's just someone that I've worked with a lot. Uh, and he there's always feedback and back and forth. And uh, and Tucci is great too. Uh, mm-hmm. Mike Tucci. Uh, he oh, he yeah. to go crazy. Yeah. Uh, he's been really good. But Laporta will be like he'll get on the call and he'll be like, like even after the record comes out, he'll call me and he'll be like, so you see that one see how we delivered it at that and how it translated to DSP. Wow. That's a big part of our conversation, how what we do translates to DSP. So we'll go listen to the final master and then go listen to it across all platforms. And obviously, you know, title's always the best. And then followed by Apple Music, Spotify always sucks. It just sounds like shit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and it's crazy because you could hear the same song and it's like, you know, like you wouldn't think that the differences would be that big, but it's just, that's just how it is. Um, there's another one. I, I saw someone from RSPE said, do you have any input when you send out to master? If you're working with the, the mastering engineer, like me and Laporta, yeah, for sure. We go back and forth. He'll call me and he'll be like, yo, why don't you try one with a vocal up? Or why, why don't you try one with the 808 down or an 808 up? Uh, you know, it just depends. And like on, on MOP, when he mastered MOP, I, I actually went back and I turned the 808 up because I wanted it to be comparable to ski. But then overall, he, he did his thing. To, to, to make sure it works. Um, I think it's really important having a good relationship with mastering engineers. The, the, the times when I don't have input or any input on mastering is when it's not, not our album, when I'm maybe mixing one or two songs. Um, and usually I would have gotten one song because Thug is on there. So they'll make me right. mix that whole record yeah. or you know someone like that. And then, then they might've liked that and they might've asked me to do one or two more. So in those situations, uh, I... Uh, I, and that's happened pretty often. Um, I don't have as much uh, say with the, with mastering, and I actually didn't like some of the masters in the past because of that. Okay, all right, man. Um, so we had we have a current full sale student as well, Baines. Um, when working right, with an uh, artist, yeah, well, his name's De Niro. So De Niro asks, when working with an artist such as Thug, are the songs being put together from what's recorded, or is there already like a song structure when recording? Oh, there's no structure now. We don't. There's no demos. There's nothing. There's a there's a beat now. Now what Thug does is Thug will chop up that instrumental like crazy. He'll take a wow. bar from here, a bar from here, a bar, two bars from here, something from here. So so when I have to line up, when sorry, when Arish 
my assistant has to line up stems for anything the thug has done. It takes the longest because he he'll take the two track and go crazy with it. Just just take uh, two bars here, four bars here, just rearrange and restructure the whole thing to help him record or just to to his liking. Yep. And then when you know when you get the production stems from the producer, they're all the same way the two track came. So you have to go and match all of those months later and stuff like that. Oh it's wow! It's crazy, but yeah. No, and he might he might do a hook first or do a verse first. Might take bits and pieces. There's, everything, every song is different, and we usually start with like a blank Pro Tools session, and that's what that's that's what turns into the song. Yeah. Uh, I know a lot of other people, a lot of friends of mine who you know that work with artists that cut that 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 work with writers and stuff. So with them, it's like you know they'll get the the they'll, they'll get they'll get an instrumental and an acapella. And then they'll have to go and match that and, and, you know, cut every line and keep muting as they go along. Mm -hmm. Um, We don't really do that. Right. Okay. And then um, another question that came in was, um, have you actually mixed in Atmos? I know we've spoken before, but... um, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Funk is now... um, Oh, wow. All of Funk is is out in Atmos now, yeah. Wow. And how was that process for you? It it was cool. It was just like, what takes time is the stems and and, and shout out to my homie... uh, uh, so t- actually TikTok came out before Punk. Yep. <laughs> um, that was the first one. So that that one, uh, the label hit me up. And they were like, "Yo, you need to learn how to how to mix an Atmos." And they were just like, "Go." They sent me to Dolby. Wow. Um, <laughs> down the road, uh, it was dope. I met them. They showed me they have this crazy prototype Model X Tesla with Atmos in it. Oh wow! Um, oh yeah, I've heard about that. Yeah. <laughs> and it just sounds it's like that is yeah. like in my opinion that's where Atmos is going to shine in the car. Yeah. Oh, dude, yeah. I, I, I can't get someone, when I'm playing a mix to someone, I can't then get them to sit over here at this sweet spot for two minutes to listen to a song. You, and, and in Atmos, it's way worse. Like, you get out of that sweet spot and it's done. You know, you have to sit right there for yeah. to get that impact. But anyway, so I did that record and then I've done a few more since then and then with Funk, I, I mixed it with my buddy, um, Mike Miller. He's a, He's, he's, he's the Atmos king now in LA. He's, he's, uh, uh, Tizio's been using him a bunch too. And we just sit there, like, get everything together and we'll go in and, uh, you know, just mix the record. Oh, amazing, man. Well, it's good to know that you're doing Atmos stuff there. I'm going to check out the punk album in Atmos as well. That's a, that's a new one for me, yeah. man. So I'm going to definitely yep. do that. Yeah, <laughs> um, that one. So... Uh, I, did, I, I did Mop in Atmos too for Gunner, but I don't know if they've put that out here. Okay. Cool. Definitely will check that out. Um, so we've got a few more coming in. I'll, yeah, definitely do a few more. So Simon says, how deep do you go with cleaning and editing up, editing up the audio that, material that, that, and returning that's vocals? That's the biggest part of huge, yeah. Huge, yeah. yeah, hours. Sometimes hours. Wow. And like Isotope uh, RX is a, is, a big, is a big part of it. Wow. De-clicking, de-popping. Uh, you know, there might, just, just, there might be a weird chair noise or a door slam or someone talking <laughs> in the background. It's just a bunch of RX. So. Yeah, and there's obviously no... Um, there's no certain times you're at the studio, right? You're there pretty much every day apart from sleep. Yeah. Sometimes even day. sleep, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, we oh, we've just, we've just, you know, labels just dropped two albums. So it's, it's a little, uh, it's not as, I, 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 I'd be lying if I said it's like this 24 seven throughout the year. It used to be like that. Uh, past few weeks have been a little, a little less hectic. Uh, I've been mixing, setting my own schedule, you know, just living a normal life, which is great. <laughs> nice <laughs> um so actually this is a great great um question by wayne so how do you approach your mix so with the drums and bass or vocals and piano or guitar and melody because it's like a producer like how do you start your production drums or bass or synths um, um what is it for an engineer the, the shit that takes a lot of time is the vocal cleanup and i try to do that first if that's not been done in the prep and then then i'll move from there because that that you want the system to still run good and, and fast and once you start, once you're deep in them, if you've done all the instruments and then you go to the vocals mm-hmm. to do small things, it just won't be as snappy, the computer, because right. there's yep. plugins slowing it down. Like the, you know, you might you might have to wait a second, not a second, but, you know, because of delay compensation and all that stuff. So I'll try to make sure all my vocal editing and cleanup is done. Then I'll go 808, uh, 808 usually, then kick, uh, then the rest of the drums and music. Okay. Uh, and then... Fit, like you know i've gotten the, most of the vocal cleanup done and then it's just fitting the vocals back in mm-hmm. and then you know that kind of stuff um and then it's always again this is just i'm just saying like that's the first thing i thought of right now that i did in the last record every record is different 
you know, it just depends. Uh, but and then also there's a lot of going back and adjusting things with each other and stuff like that. Okay, so uh, we have it seven oh one. Someone asks. Just two more. I'm going to be quick as I can, guys. So, um, right, One of them, great question, I think, is it's so important. As an engineer who's obviously based outside of um, or inside YSL kind of headquarters, let's say, uh, yeah. when you do go to other sessions, you go to other kind of studios, what do you take as an engineer? Like, obviously, would you have your like, like your headphones? Would you have... But let's, the, let's talk. The weirdest, weirdest thing is I take my fucking keyboard. Wow. <laughs> that, 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 yes, that, I like that's that. The, that's the most important thing for me. And people like see me wow. throw up with a keyboard. I'm like, yeah, that's just me. That's that's that's, that's that. I need my keyboard because I'm like paralyzed on these other keyboards. I take keyboard, headphones usually, but they'll probably have headphones. Um, everything else they'll probably have. You know, you gotta have your drive, uh, flash drive, stuff like that. Some computers don't have AirDrop, the older ones, so you have to like just deal with that. Yep. Um, but it's my keyboard, man. If I have to pick one desert island thing that I take with, is the keyboard. <laughs> is the keyboard. And then also, yeah, I I do take a this handheld uh Latin microphone okay it's 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 actually not meant to be a handheld microphone it's just a, a off axis rejecting microphone i think it's called ls208 but thug likes to sometimes he likes to lie in the back of the room and just hold the mic in his hand and just oh, you nice. know that, that's the vibe for him too so oh, i just amazing. have that mic on hand so if he ever needs to do that we used to use the sm7b but um this is this is just a slightly better version of that because it's it, it's a condenser mic so just a little bit of a higher quality recording and it's super wow. cheap too yeah and, shout and, out to those guys a lot man they, they make some great mics yeah i was gonna say so actually um sorry i'm just adding a bit on there as well. i remember when i met you and you were saying kind of there's no like structure to even record sometimes doug would like to record even in the same room as you're mixing as you're sorry. tracking be next to yeah, you yeah. um and i love that because it's like you you, well, you want to be in your environment and kind of let that energy out and dude, it's so important this, right this, this this record that uh uh you know, on, on Kanye's album, the, the remote control record. Dude, yes. we did that in, in the middle of rehearsals. Uh, they, what, we, he, we weren't meant, we were in Orlando rehearsing for the live show. And he literally stopped, like took the jet from Atlanta to Florida just to rehearse for about two hours and then jumped on the jet and went to Miami where Rolling Loud and All was. And in that time, someone was like, yo, he needs to record. Can you make it happen? And I was like, I don't have a microphone. Because uh, I didn't have that travel, that's why I carry that with me now. Right, I didn't have right. that at the time, and I, you know, we were just at rehearsals. I just happened to have my laptop and, yeah. I, and my uh, interface on me and my in ears that I was using. Yeah. Luckily, my boy Demetrius, who's our our, our front of house guy, dope front of house, he used to work with. Uh, he, I mean, he still does. He's Drake's front of house as well. Uh, yeah. D came to me and he was like, "Yo, I have this shitty. It, it's not even a Beta 58, but it's like a Beta 58." He was <laughs> like, "Will it work?" And he was like, oh, I can get another condenser and set it up. And I was like, dude, like, get me the Beta 58 because we're recording in like an office. There's like noise outside and stuff. Oh got it God. set up real quick with my eye louds and everything. Wow. And there's a video of that too. will come out one day. But it's dope. And you know that album Grammy nominated now. I love that, man. Again, there's no structure. There's no manual on how to do it. You just got to do it. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> the amount of albums dude. that'll be recorded in rooms or hotel rooms. Yeah. And, uh, I love it. <laughs> hotel rooms, like, dude, dude uh, slow, with sound, slow recorded gunner at the hospital. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow, <laughs> man. There's a lot of reverb there as well. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Amazing, Baines. So I think the last question that I think there's a lot of student, students on today. I know we touched on it a little bit earlier as well, but kind of what's your one piece of advice as Baines um, huge hip hop engineer, mixer, tracker. What's one piece of advice you'd give to someone leaving college, university, or kind of yeah, just getting into the world of 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 just mixing and engineering? Uh, man, just be humble, stay down, put in the hours, and just keep getting better at your craft. Um, and I I just saw this question, and I wanted to answer it. Yeah, it of says, course. Do you subtract first when mixing vocals, then boost, or boost then subtract? I subtract then boost. Uh, and that's that, that. That could be that. That, that could be a parting tip. First attracted I like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, amazing. Well, Baines, uh, from the whole Avid crew across the world and all the audience that we've had today, thank you so much. As always, man, you've been amazing. Um, shared a yeah. lot of tips and techniques, and I can't wait to hear more amazing music from you guys. And um, thanks, hopefully, thank you every see you soon. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I was going to say yeah. thanks to everyone who jumped in. And if I I I, I saw a whole bunch of questions pop mm. up, and I'm sure I didn't get to them. If you guys want to ask me anything, hit me up on Instagram, um, you know, send an email, whatever, reach out. I'm happy to answer questions. Yeah, cool. Uh, love Did you talking wanna... to people, man. 
Yeah, it's, it's, just, it's, it's just Baines, B-A-I-N-Z-Z-Z. Uh, should I just type it in over here in the Q&A? Um, yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, yeah, that'd be amazing. Uh, I don't know if I can do that here. I'm, I'm, I'll just type it here. All right, I got it. All right, man. There you go, guys. All right, Baines, thank you, thank you so much, dude. Um, we'll definitely right. see you soon. And um, thank you, everyone around the world and all the Avid staff. It's been amazing. And uh, we'll catch up soon. Thank you, Baines. Right. Take it, dude. Peace out, man. See you, man. Flat.